हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज सिंदम पटेल एंड वेलकम बैक टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ मशीन डिजाइन इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द एस एन डायग्राम एंड एंड्यूरेंस लिमिट द रिलेशन बिटवीन द एंड्यूरेंस लिमिट एंड द अल्टीमेट टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस लिमिट सो वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट दोज कॉन्सेप्ट बिकॉज दिज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अकॉर्डिंग टू डिजाइनिंग द डिफरेंट कॉम्पोनेंट विच आर सब्जेक्टेड टू रिवर्सिबल स्ट्रेसिस और वी कैन से इट्स अ फर्ट फ्लक्चुएटिंग स्ट्रेसिस so these are going to very going to be very helpful for that particular concept let's get started with the first topic of this session and uh, that is nothing but the fatig load and fatig failure based uh, design using the sn diagram so sn diagram basically is plot uh, as a result of the testing that we have carried out on this particular diagram that is uh, shown in this on the screen uh, this is the Uh, as you can see the test specimen is subjected to a certain amount of the weights which will bend the test specimen and uh, uh, electric motor will rotate the test specimen in order to generate the uh, repeated or the alternating stresses into it based on the uh, counter and uh, values of the stresses generated into the material and its failure condition the uh, sn diagrams are generated for different materials we have a different sn diagram first of all as you can see on your screen is the sn diagram for the ferrous material and another diagram is for the aluminum alloys so for different uh, test specimen material you can get that sn diagram accordingly now what is sn diagram what we are talking about in this particular testing will be explained in the further video so as you can see basically we have considered a test specimen having the shape as you can see in your diagram this is a very standard space uh, test specimen and uh, this test specimen is held between these two uh, shaft and as you can see now uh, it is subjected to a uh, weights like this these are the weights which are going to pull the specimen in the downward direction the weight is always acting in a downward direction and that is why this specimen is going to uh, 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 going to suffer a bending like this it is going to be bend like this okay so bending is occurring due to the weight which is applied on this testing now there is one electric motor over here uh, we know that due to the bending due to the bending the upper tensile or we can we know that the below thread the below thread of the specimen will be under the ten, tension and upper thread of the specimen will be under the compression so let's take let's take one point over here this is our first point and one point over here if these two points are subjected to different type of the nature as i mentioned the below point is subjected to a tensile nature stress tensile nature bending stress and above point is this uh, top point is subjected to a compressive nature bending stress so the nature of both the bending stress on both the points are different now the electric motor rotates them continuously so what happens this point goes up due to the rotation and above point goes down due to the rotation so what happens now this point is at this position and this point is at below position so positions is altered and similarly the nature of the stress will also alter so now as this point goes up it will feel, it will suffer the bending stress of the nature compression in the previous in the previous rotation it was suffering from the tensile bending stress now it is suffering from the compressive bending stress so as you see the same point is having is subjected to a different nature of the stress with each and every rotation so the rotation keeps on going and electric motor rotates it with the some certain amount of the rpm and each and every rotation cycles are are counted using this counter this is our counter which will keep the record of the cycle number of cycles that the specimen has endured okay so basically the specimen we are testing a number of cycle how many number of cycle does the specimen can withstand if the specimen fails then the counter will stop counting the number of cycle 
okay and uh, it will give us the number of cycle at which the specimen is failing so this is how we are going to plot a diagram of the results that we get okay so basically what are we going to do is we are going to plot in, on one axis a strength okay so as you can see on this axis we are going to represent a fatigue strength which is represented by sf on the uh, another axis we are going to represent the number of stress cycles number of stress cycles or number of cycles which is represented by n so basically this is the plot of strength versus n that is the number of cycles so now first of all in the first uh, testing you know, in the very first testing of the material we are going to keep the stress we are going to keep the stress what how much stress we need to apply can be can be decided by uh, can be varied by the num amount of the weight that we are going to apply over here if you want to increase the stress you can just increase the weight of the bending uh, that we are going to uh, apply on this you can just in increase the weight that that will uh, in uh, that will increase the stress which is going to be applied on the body if you want to reduce the stress then simply reduce the weight that that is causing the bending okay so for in the initial uh, first testing we are going to keep the weight that will create the stress on the material which is almost equals to sut sut is the ultimate tensile strength ultimate tensile strength so we are going to keep the amount of the stress almost equal to slightly less than but almost equals to uh, sut so first uh, test cycle is having the stress value uh, strength value at over here the first reading of the strength is over here so this is our first reading then we are going to rotate the motor as you as you can see the this is almost near to the sut then the material will eventually fail without a complete rotation of the cycle so the cycle will not complete because it is almost near to sut as for, as soon as you rot, uh, try to apply the fatigue fatigue loading or the fluctuating loading on the material it will immediately fail that is why the number of cycle is also zero so our first point is uh, plotted over here in the successive second testing we are going to reduce the amount of the stress so let's say we reduce the weight that we are going to use over here to create the bending so we reduce the amount of the stress less than the sut less than the first testing then we will be able to rotate it for the more number of cycles so it will give us the point somewhere near over here okay so this point will be obtained and so material will fail after this much amount of the after this much amount of number of cycle okay let's say this much amount of the number of cycle whatever it is uh, according to this point whatever the cycle number of cycle we get okay after that we again reduce the weight and we can measure the number of cycle before its failure it will give us something about this again the, it will give us the number of cycle somewhere near us similarly it will if you plot all the points uh, by reducing the amount of the uh, amount of the stresses then you will get this type of the diagram as shown in this ascent diagram plot after reaching up to this point you will even if you reduce more weight then this point after reaching this point it will be the your diagram will be completely horizontal it means that that your material if, will not fail even if you increase the number of cycles so this is called a infinite life as a point beyond the 10 raised to 6 as you can see beyond 10 raised to 6 it is not going to fail and we can say uh, uh, beyond this number of cycle we can consider the material is having the infinite uh, infinite life okay similarly you can plot the similar diagram for the sn uh, uh, aluminum alloys and you will get the similar diagram for the aluminum alloys like this and in for the case of the aluminum alloys the graph gets almost horizontal almost horizontal after reaching the 10 raised to 8 point so for aluminum alloys the infinite life uh, starts after 10 raised to 8 number of cycle 
but provided you must have to reduce the amount of the stress that is going to create the bending stress in the material so if you reduce the amount of the stress and uh, the uh, by reducing up to a certain level if you reach up to a point where the number of cycle exceeds the 10 to 8 number of cycle then you can consider that point as a endurance limit point that endurance limit point indicate that if you apply the stress below this much this level then your material is not going to fail even if you rotate it beyond the 10 to 8 number of cycles so this is how we are going to calculate the endurance limit point which is represented by s e dash over here so what is endurance limit point that the, it is the particular value of the stress if you reduce the stress from SUT to SET, SE dash and keep reducing then, then it is the value of the stress beyond which if you reduce further more stresses, your material is not going to fail up to 10 s to 6 or 10 s to 8 number of cycles for depending on the material. So this is how we calculate the uh, endurance limit stress. Now we we'll see the relation between the endurance limit and the ultimate tensile strength which will be helpful for the calculation of the example now as you can see the uh, st for the steel and the alloy steels s e dash can be calculated by the 0.5 of sut 0.5 of sut but provided sut should be less than or equals to 1400 newton per mm square and it is 700 newton per mm square for sut greater than 100, 1400 and newton per mm square so this is widely accepted assumption that s e dash can be considered for the steel and alloy steel materials uh, now for the cast iron and the cast steels <coughs> You can consider the relation like this S E dash equals to 0 0.45 SUT and 275 for greater than 600 Newton per mm square. This condition should be considered while selecting the relation for the calculation of your examples. Now we will see further the endurance limit and the mechanical component. So endurance limit can be calculated while considering certain factors. Now there are certain factors which may affect your design of the component based on the working condition as well as the uh, situation. Now what are those factors? So uh, initially I would like to introduce those factors by, uh, by starting with the surface finish factor. So as you can see the surface finish factor is represented by Ka. KB is a size factor, KC is a load factor, KD is a temperature factor, KE is the modifying for the stress concentration factor and KG is a reliability factor. Now the notation KE, KB, KC, KD may change with respect to the book that you consider and uh, the main thing that you need to remember is the name of the factor because I, at last whenever you solve your example or any concept of the theory then you will you must remember the name of the factor that you are considering over here. So let's say uh, the surface finish of the uh, material is not as good as required so that at that time you will have to multiply the KA factor with your endurance limit uh, and, and if it is uh, perfectly smooth then you don't have to multiply k a in your equation okay now size factor if your size is a tremendously awkward or the complex shape uh, at which you cannot predict the failure of the material and that is why uh, you will have to multiply the kb as a size factor with your s e dash <coughs> KC is the load factor. So if there is uncertainty about the load that is going to be applied on the body, then you must have uh, multiply the KC with your SE dash. Similarly, temperature factor, if the temperature is changing with respect to the time during the working cycle of the, of the body, then you must consider the KD. KE is the modifying factor for the stress concentration. So if stress concentration is occurring at the abrupt change in the dimension as well as the sharp corners something like that then you must have to multiply the ke in your equation and kg is the reliability factor which is required for the reliability of the material so if your material properties are reliable then you can uh, you don't have to multiply it in your equation but if the material
material properties are changing with respect to the time as well as the working condition then you must consider that a kg in your equation so after considering all the factors you can directly calculate the value of the se that is the endurance limit of the mechanical component for the designing purpose so this is how we going to uh, uh, this is how we are going to design our component subjected to a fatigue loading endurance using the endurance limit and we conclude our today's session over here we will see few more uh, few more methods to solve the examination examples and the design the different components subjected to a certain type of the condition in the upcoming lecture so we conclude our lecture over here thank you